Good morning, everyone. Hope it's a good morning wherever you are. We are rather cold here this morning on Mala Mala, especially down close to the river. It's myself, Yaku, and Maka. We're heading out this morning to go see if we can find the Kambula Pride that was seen yesterday. And we're going to be working, driving around the central eastern parts of Mala Mala this morning. Alright, good morning Marcus. So what have we come across here on our search for the Kambula Pride? So uh, there's uh, like a stomach grass. You can see the, the grass here and the tracks of lions as well as the hyena. So it means uh, the Kambula Pride, maybe early this morning they uh, caught uh, something, a gas in powder and uh, it's only the, the stomach contact left. All right, folks, so this is the scene of the crime. This is the stomach contents that Marco was explaining. The, it's all that remains from the kill that the lions made early this morning. You can see here also, because there's almost 20 lions feeding on this carcass, all these bushes here have been pushed over to create a little bit more space for them to feed upon. been following the tracks of what we believe is the Kambula Pride for quite some time now and it's led us into the area of Marthley um, which is quite nice because I wanted to drive Marth Marthley this morning and the tracks are in, for now are heading towards the Manuleti River and also in the direction of the Sand River where we know there is a bit of water and we kind of um, assuming that these lions are going to go for a drink because we've already seen the crime scene where they've caught an impala or something and as Marcus said we believe they're now heading towards the, the river for a drink so we're going to stay on these tracks and see where it leads us Alright folks, so we've come across the uh, lion tracks again they've gone off the road into quite a thick block of land here and Marka has also spotted some tracks of zebras that have gone into this area. So what we think is that maybe these lions are hunting uh, zebras maybe early this morning sometime. And as you can imagine, one impala ram is not going to feed a pride of 20 lions. So we're now driving into this block of land or this thick uh, combretum thicket and seeing if we can come across any sign of these lions. We've decided to go in deeper into this block of land. We now have Marka and Yaku on foot looking for tracks. It's easier for them to do, look for the tracks of the lines in this very dense area as opposed to looking at them from the vehicle like Marka was doing this morning. Uh, they're going to stay relatively close to the vehicle in case they do come across anything. But that's what they're doing now and I'm going to try to follow them and navigate through this very, very dense block of land. Just to give you some idea that wall of green over there is what I have to try to get through and less than probably 30 or 40 feet away there that's where Marka and Yaku is you can just see Marka and Yaku walking just over there wish me luck one of the advantages of hunting in an area like this for Pride of Lions is the exact same reason why for, it is very difficult for us to manoeuvre through here. It's very thick, there's a lot of vegetation and uh, cover for these lions to use when they're stalking their prey. And also for a prey, it's quite difficult to manoeuvre through here. I mean, if you're a, one of the large animals like a zebra or a wildebeest or even a giraffe, trying to manoeuvre between these trees can be quite a feat. Um, smaller antelopes like the dikers or the steenbok or even impalas they will be better suited to nipping and and guiding their way through these areas because they are that much smaller but the larger um, species of prey like i said 
uh, zebras, wildebeest, giraffe, even buffalo, waterbuck as well. Uh, it'll be slightly more difficult for them to navigate uh, through these very dense thick areas giving the lions some advantage as well. Marco and Yaku have heard a squirrel calling in that direction and as you can see it is rather thick through there. So they're quickly going to go and have a look, uh, see what that squirrel is alarm calling at and I'm going to sit tight here in the safety of the vehicle. Now heading towards Stwice and Bulliwe, the two large rocky outcrops in this area, seeing if the Kapula Pride headed that way, or maybe we can see any of their tracks. Despite our best efforts, we were unable to find the lions this morning. We still think they're somewhere in that very thick block of land. Uh, we've driven around there, we can't find any tracks leaving the block of land. So we think that they're resting up now. They probably would have caught something last night or early this morning in there. And we're going to come back here a bit later to see if we can find them. They're more than likely going to head towards the river to drink at some point during today. So that will be a good place to find them this afternoon. Scratch what I just said. We've just found lion tracks in the Manialeti River now as we're heading back to camp. It looks like they're heading towards the Sand River. As we said, they might be looking to drink. So that's where we're heading. Our last attempt now to find these lions. Yaku, so what's happened? So we eventually found the, the tracks of the Kambula Pride heading all the way down to the Sand River as we predicted and then we did see the tracks now crossing the Sand River uh, westwards heading towards a road called Jeremiah's Loop. Good afternoon. This morning was slightly unsuccessful. The Kambula Pride crossed the Sand River into an area where we unfortunately could not follow them through the river. This afternoon, myself and Yaku, we're gonna be going down along the river. It's been very hot today, so we're hoping that a lot of animals have come down to the river to drink, and we're gonna see what we can find along the river banks of the Sand River today. Two hippos, looks to be a female that's lying with the majority of her body out the water there. And then a young calf resting its head on the back of its mother there. Young bull elephants will form these loose associations with one another before they are old enough and mature enough to be considered potential mates for the breeding herds of elephants. So they will actively trail a herd of elephants that has potential females that they will be able to mate with. But they still have some time before that happens. Male elephants will generally start mating when they are in the region of 40 years plus. These three elephants here are probably in the region of their late 20s, early 30s. Here are two of the adult southern ground hornbills. As you can see, the red facial markings are not as prevalent as the ones on the adults. So this one is the youngest bird in this flock, also known as a phalanx of southern ground hornbills. Here we have two male impalas chasing each other around. As we know, this is the rutting season, causing quite a commotion for the other animals in the area.
Beautiful sight to see all the female impalas crossing the road in front of us. Single male with them will have his work cut out going into the mating season. All right, folks. So myself and Liam, we are busy following up on reports of a leopard uh, that we've seen in this area. Confirm did she ascend or descend at that day tree? Descend into the bank. Oh, sorry, into the river. Ah. And then went slightly north. And then lost it. Ah. We haven't been able to come across this leopard that was seen from across the river. The monkeys were chattering and alarm calling, so there was definitely a leopard in the area. And even uh, Peter and Bruce uh, from Rattray's camp saw it from across the river. So now myself and Yaku are we're going to be driving north along the river because the last time we saw the uh, monkeys chattering where they were looking was indicating northward, so upstream. That's where we're going to be looking now. Today just hasn't been our day. We spent the whole morning following up on lion tracks and they evaded us. And this afternoon, well, we got some very broad species of game and it was wonderful to see some of the interactions. Uh, when it came to the uh, leopard that was seen coming down into the Sand River just by Rattray's camp, that too has evaded us. Yaku, your thoughts? You win some, you lose some, eh? I'm sure we'll do better tomorrow. <laughs> As I was saying to Yaku a bit earlier, we have to have these types of days, these slow days or these... Um, quiet days. Quiet days yeah. um, that make us really appreciate when yeah. the Mala Mala magic happens. And yeah. who knows, tomorrow there might be four different lion prides, three leopards found... I know I'm being very <laughs> ambitious with what's saying that, but mm -hmm. yeah. for the time being, myself and Yaku is going to enjoy the sunset yeah. and head back to camp shortly afterwards. Stay safe. Stay safe. So just as the sun is setting, Peter van Veek, I hate to say it, but he's found us a leopard to close out the day and we're on our way there now. She's gone off the road and she's into the very grassy area with a few shrubs and small bushes in it. She's now approached a herd of impalas. There's about 20 impalas in the area here. She's about 50 feet from them at the moment. So this female leopard looks to be the three of us female. She's now about 20 meters from these impalas. She's busy stalking them. We don't have visual of her at the moment but we know exactly where she is. The impalas are just over here. 
and the Three Rivers female leopard. It's just over here behind this dead tree. There's a green bush and she's just behind there. So we're just going to sit tight and see how this all plays out. <laughs> Unfortunately folks, that sound that you're hearing now and all the impalas looking in this direction that's the sound of defeat for the leopard she was obviously a little bit too eager and the impalas saw her and now she's moving away from them we're going to follow her and see where she goes. Alright folks, we're going to try something a bit new with Yaku's camera. Mm -hmm. It has an infrared setting. Yeah. So that's how we're going to be filming the Three Rivers female now without any spotlights or anything like that. 